So for example, if I were to open up Firefox and I don't know what is squeaking outside. That was weird. I'm just gonna reopen Firefox and do that scene again. Good day folks, Jordan here with a software overview video. Today we're going to take a brief look at Ubuntu 15.10 Willy Werewolf, which was released on the 22nd of October 2015, which is also the day that it was my 16th birthday. So woohoo, I had an Ubuntu release on my birthday, I'm proud to say that, that's pretty awesome. Shut the f up, no one cares about your robot fan fiction. Know your f place, trash. But anyway. On with the rest of the very short list of changes that were in this particular release. So Mirror was supposed to be inside of this particular release of Ubuntu. Now if you haven't been watching my video series, you probably don't know what Mirror is. Mirror is supposed to be the replacement for the Xorg Windows Server. If you've ever used any major Linux distribution, you'll know that uh, X Windows or Xorg are the most commonly used Windows Server system, which in this case powers Unity 7 for this particular release of Ubuntu. So Mir was supposed to replace Xorg, but it never really has happened. It was used in the phone platform for a little while, to our recollection, but it's never really been used in the desktop, at least from these releases uh, up to this point. So. This particular release was anticipated to have the Mir display server, but it didn't end up having it. So really that's kind of a bit of a disappointment. Now, what is a bit of a change was the scroll bars. So if we were to open up Firefox, for example, and go to a website, we'll see if we can try to replicate what I'm talking about here. So let's just say we go to wikipedia.org and we just go to their home page here, for example. It is Wikipedia Asian Month. Really interesting. You'll notice that the scroll bar on the side looks a little bit different. Actually, it's gonna look a little bit easier in a window. You'll see that it's not the disappearing scroll bar that Ubuntu used to have. It's now a fixed scroll bar. Now, web browsers are not the only program that this takes effect in. So if we were to open up LibreOffice, which is now LibreOffice 5, and open up the presentation program, we're more than likely able to see the scroll bar change. As you can see, in this program too, there is also the fixed GNOME scroll bars in place. And while we're in here, actually, let's take a look at what version of LibreOffice we have. We have LibreOffice version 5.0.2.2. Very nice. So. That's pretty cool to see. In fact, I keep triggering VMware when I do that. In terms of Firefox, I never looked at this one yet. We're on Firefox 41.0.2. Lovely. Very sweet. So, pretty cool. Now, another program that I usually take a look at the version numbers in, since it's here in this particular suite of uh, Linux distros, is the Ubuntu browser, which in this case has an icon that's very reminiscent of Safari's. So I suppose we'll check that out here real quick and see if there's any particularly different changes, and oh boy there is. If you notice, there's a new tab bar up here. I don't remember if there was a tab button on the side, but there was a tab up there. And there's a heck of a lot more settings now than there once was, like find in page, private mode, uh, tab controls, web history, you know it. And you can also apparently now change the default search engine from Google to whatever you prefer to use. So that's pretty cool. Now, as I usually do, I usually go to google.com and search what is my browser. Because I like to check and see what version of the Chromium web engine this uses. In this case, apparently it is still using Chromium 35. Very interesting, because this is not Ubuntu Linux 14 anymore. This is version 15.10. So I'm not sure if that's just something to do with this particular website, but I'm not using 14.04. And also that's not my uh, zip code. Um, yeah, that's weird. So, okay. And uh, other than that, really there's not too much else to talk about with this release. So, since this is so bland, I figured we'd read a couple of reviews of Ubuntu 15.10 Willy Werewolf on this video, 
to kind of wrap things up, generally speaking. One particular review that I kind of find it funny is Joey Snedden of OMG Ubuntu, and he said, and I quote, For a release named after a terrifying mythological creature, Ubuntu 15.10 is surprisingly tame. There are no dramatic transformations, no bone popping or shirt ripping, and certainly no hair sprouting under the milky eye or full moon. In fact, a new wallpaper and change in scrollballer appearance is about as shape-shifty as this werewolf gets. And he's not lying. I mean, this release is quite bland. And to be honest, I mean, it could have been worse. Yes, we could have never seen this release, and there could have been more, sure, but we got what we got. Another review was on... Dido Amido, I think that's how you pronounce the site. I'm probably mispronouncing it, and I don't know who wrote this review, so I don't know who to credit. I guess we'll probably figure that out in the comments section later on. But I will say whatever this review says, and I quote, uh, Ubuntu 15.10, and this is where the quote starts, is, Unpredictably, is horrible. Give me a good experience or give me a bad experience, but please try not to seesaw between them erratically. Continue a steady change in behavior any which way. And then this review concluded with, and I quote, It underperforms compared to some of its siblings and ancestors. Not the best, definitely not worth a perma upgrade, but you might find it more palatable to your hardware and use cases. Overall, though, Willy isn't the best of distros. It sure gave me the Willies. 7 out of 10. End quote. So, very interesting uh, outlook on the whole OS. I know it's a little bit cryptic, that one, but hey, you know, you, you only can do so much, but whatever. And finally, we have Stephen J. Vaughn Nichols of ZDNet, which praised the release of Ubuntu 15.10 Willy Werewolf for its integration of cloud services such as OpenStack, uh, cloud deployment and management, so on and so forth. There's also an autopilot tool for OpenStack, and... Um, there's also talk about the hypervisor known as LXD, which was included by default in 15.10. And Von Nichols concluded his review, and I quote, With these advances, chances are you're more likely to use Ubuntu hidden behind the scenes on clouds and servers. And maybe there are some more under the hood changes with this particular release than what I talked about in this video. Some of which I probably wouldn't even be able to describe to you because, of course, we all know that Linux is a very complex beast. And you have to know your way in and out of Linux in order to understand what's going on from underneath the surface. But that's about going to wrap it up for this video. I know it wasn't much, and I know that there could be more that I could demonstrate in these videos. But honestly, these reviews are about as boring as they come for Ubuntu in this particular series. There's just not much to talk about. And there's just not that much to demonstrate with the whole aspect of the operating system so i don't know we're gonna leave it at that i'm gonna go ahead and shut this virtual machine down i'd like to thank you all for watching if you like this video and i know it's kind of a tough like but if you did like this video give it a like and if you want to see more videos just like this one or in fact have harder videos or more diverse videos be sure to subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one have a good one mm -hmm.